given the challenge of a new computing and information environment, we recognize that covers the entire Navy from the Enterprise Foundation all the way out to the operational tip. Technology is evolving at such a rapid pace. The Navy does not want to be left behind. iPhones came out four years ago, and we're just being able to react to that as a society, not even as a military. When you step into a theater, you should be connected in a decision-making environment and support the operational commander's vision. The critical thing that we have to do is stay connected. The Navy is currently using industrial age acquisition in an interconnected age. What cyber-enabled operations can do is give the commander more options. So we have to examine these things now and take the proactive measures or we're not going to be relevant. Information and computing architecture. As we see proliferation of chipsets, data, processing, storage, the different capabilities coming out of the huge IT industry, it becomes apparent that you can have a, a huge amount of storage and processing out on the edge. People who will be coming in the Navy in, in the next 10 years will come with an expectation and experience of using technology in their daily lives, of being connected all the time. Young people that are coming in, they're going to expect to have some type of mobile computing device. This is what they've been born with. This is all they know. They're easy in reference to texting, getting messages out. It's all about being quick and fast. We're saying the same thing. We need our Navy to be connected all the time. Communications is the backbone of this whole architecture. The comms in depth was originated based you know, on our military experience on, on having defense in depth. People that are using cutting edge technology will be able to get into our operating systems easier. They'll be able to cut off communications. How would we have a cascade plan, for lack of a better term, of how to have different communications paths, modalities, and systems if we get degraded or denied? Logically, bad decisions follow from bad information. So we have to be able to trust the information we get. That's the bottom line. When you start looking at uh, the equipment that we're using, um, computers and, and the interconnection between them, trust takes on a different meaning. The Navy doesn't need to be merging databases. They need to be connecting information. IT Enterprise. Governance and policy is a big challenge. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the military, Department of Defense in general, isn't treating information like a weapon system. There's too many folks in charge of too many little pieces of the computer information environment when perhaps it should be more consolidated. It's bifurcated, it's spread out across the Navy that uh, lines of uh, command and control for information technology is inefficient. We need to look at how we build our systems in a completely different way. The Navy, if we think about it, as an IT company that has ships and planes and submarines and SEALs. We can't stay relevant, we can't stay up pace with what's going on in technology. It's just moving too fast for the archaic acquisition system we have. What drives Moore's Law is the R&D efforts of private industry. Being able to partner with the work that they're doing allows us to find operational utility for cutting edge research, but more importantly, have access to that research two or three Moore's Laws generations before it becomes a commercial off-the-shelf product. It's not just about technology. It's about getting the right people and training the right people. So we're looking for those highly qualified, highly skilled, talented individuals to be a part of the Navy. It's not about filling billets. It's about quality people. And after all, the 18 and 19-year-olds uh, will be the decision makers of tomorrow. Enhanced operational capabilities. The Navy needs a new playbook for the commander. And we have an expanded playbook now through information operations and cyberspace. So rather than having to make a kinetic strike, they could potentially either shape the adversary's environment by taking cyber actions or actually engage them in the physical realm using cyber. We have to be able to be agile in the EM spectrum. At the operational level of war, it's really about moving forces through the ocean and potentially either defending or conducting 
uh, military operations. The carrier going into a anti-access era of the Nile situation is, uh, is getting more and more dangerous as time goes on. Uh, our adversaries are creating anti-ship missiles that are, are becoming a lot more capable. We've been so relegated to things kinetic and traditional warfare as we understand it. There are some that believe that this might be a revolution in military affairs with the introduction of information systems, the capabilities, their strengths and their weaknesses. What cyber-enabled operations can do is give the commander more options. Decision advantage. When you step into a theater, you should be connected in a decision-making environment that connects people and processes and technology in such a way that solutions are generated and support the operational commander's vision. The operational commander, what he brings to the fight, what his weapon is, is his decision. The execution of those orders are done by tactical units. He should be able to reach out and be able to uh, collaborate with his peers or with his subordinates or with the seniors. We envision the mock of 2020 as not a place, but it's an environment unconstrained by physical or geographic boundaries. In terms of decision advantage, the operational commander will be able to utilize their computer systems to do what computers are good for. There's a lot of data out there, but it tends to come in little snippets. Somehow we've got to find them, we've got to weave them together into a tapestry that has some, some meaning to a human. And that's where computers really bring us incredible power. Humans don't have an innate sense of ones and zeros. Humans can abstract information, put it together in new ways, come up with rich solution sets. And when we wear out our people doing things that computers should be doing, we're at a disadvantage. We all want to make sense of the environment around us. The operational commander particularly wants to do that. We're looking for advantage in a new age, an interconnected age. Information can be a weapon. Knowledge is power. If you want to improve the operational level of war, you've got to empower our people. We need to help change the culture. There's some great ideas out there for uh, the Navy to partner with industry. If we don't move into advanced information technology, some of the Navy's missions and hardware will become obsolete. The convergence of sea power and cyber enabled by information technology. And you have to add on top of that the people. So if we let the computers manage the information and the humans manage the context, then we'll be a lot better off in our operations. We've got to uh, take the power of computing that's available in technology today and tomorrow, and put it to work for the operational commander to empower and improve his decision-making capability. We're going to be uh, in the EM spectrum. We're going to be netted. We're going to be agile. And we're going to be a force to be reckoned with.